Hey everybody, JCB here with The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest, Awesomest, Awesome List. What's up, bro? Bra? Protein shake? Bohemian Rhapsody? Bro Burnham? Bro Back Mountain? This is the video for guys. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're paying attention to my channel, I recently uploaded a video that was entirely focused on what women should bring to Six Flags Magic Mountain, and, well, I'll just let me explain it to you. And one thing I get asked about a lot is what people should bring and wear to the park. But there are different answers to that question for different people. So for the sake of organization, and because I don't have any motion graphics for numbers 20 through 16, I have split what would be a top 20 list into two top 10 lists, one for men and one for women. Now obviously some of these things are going to apply to both sexes, so I recommend you watch both videos. I promise there will be very little overlap. Also, you guys are always asking for more Six Flags videos, and this is the one time you're gonna get them back to back. So, you know, go enjoy them both. Thanks, me. As I said, this is a list for all my dudes. I've gotta stop doing that. Anyway, as I said, not all of these things apply only to men, but some of them do. For instance, bonus tip, wear an athletic supporter if you're going to ride Riddler's Revenge. Your future children will thank you. Anyway, without any further ado, here are the top 10 things men should bring to Six Flags Magic Mountain. Number 10, a backpack. In the girls' video, I recommended that they bring a bag to the park instead of their purse. Well, since there aren't very many bag options for men that don't look strange, Backpack it is. Pull string bags and tote bags are acceptable, I guess, but you're going to wish you could just throw it on your back. Now this may seem like a no-brainer, but believe it or not, I get asked by a lot of people if they're even allowed to bring a backpack into the park. You see, unlike Disneyland, where your bag can ride with you, the coasters at Six Flags Magic Mountain are far too intense for that. Thankfully, there are designated areas where you can put your backpack. These usually take the shape of shelves or boxes for loose articles, but sometimes they're just designated areas off to the side of the loading zone. Whatever you do, do not get a fanny pack. Seriously, just, just don't. You're going to want to get about a medium-sized backpack, something big enough to hold a lot of small items, but not so big that it becomes burdensome to carry around. Just like with the girls list, we're going to focus on function over fashion moving forward. It's also not a bad idea to customize your backpack in some way so it doesn't get mixed up with the other identical looking backpacks. By the way, I have these stickers with me every time I visit the park, so if you see me, hit me up for one. Number nine, a sweater. In the summer, it's important to bring a backpack so you can carry extra items like bottled water and sunblock. But in the winter time, you can travel a lot lighter so long as you prepare for the colder nights. For that reason, I recommend you bring a light jacket or sweater. Hoodies work pretty well. The weather in Southern California is pretty mellow, but the other parks are in other parts of the country where the weather patterns can be a little more unpredictable. And no matter where you are, the winter nights tend to get pretty cold, so always prepare for the worst. You never know when a strange rainstorm might appear out of nowhere. Number eight, a rain poncho. This is a recommended item for just about any theme park you might want to visit. There's nothing worse than getting caught in the rain, and at Six Flags Magic Mountain in particular, it's about a 20 minute walk from the park to your car. So make sure you come prepared. In general, the park will stay open in the rain, but some of the taller, more intense rides will be shut down for safety concerns. I've spent many rainy days at the park and I've had a great time. You just need to be prepared for it. Number seven, a pocket with a zipper. I am not a big shorts guy, and I'm not particularly excited about the idea of cargo pants as a fashion statement. However, it is pretty much impossible to function properly in the Southern California heat while wearing jeans. In fact, I once paid over $50 at the park to buy a pair of shorts because I came unprepared and it was well over 100 degrees outside. That said, I recommend getting some shorts with a zipper on one of the pockets. These aren't always super easy to find. For some reason, I've come across a lot of shorts that have a random zipper on there that doesn't actually do anything. What is that about, anyway? All the high fashion of a zipper with none of the functionality. Seriously, what the fuck? Anyway, keeping your phone on you at all times at a theme park is a great idea, and there's no better way to do that than finding shorts with a zipper pocket you can put your phone in, zip it up, and keep it safe, even while you're flipping through the air on X2, which is notorious for shaking phones loose from pockets. By the way, this is as good a time as any to tell you to ditch your wallet. Now, of course, bring the essentials, your ID, your debit or credit card, your season pass card if you haven't yet downloaded the app, but you can leave the 15 loyalty cards behind. There's no BevMo inside of Six Flags Magic Mountain, although that would be pretty cool. Number six, 
sunglasses. The sun is hot and bright, and overexposure to UV rays will eventually lead to your eyes developing cataracts. Slowing the deterioration of the crystalline lens is key to delaying the inevitable, and the easiest, cheapest, most effective way to do that is to wear some cool shades. But of course, we're talking about roller coasters here, and like jewelry, sunglasses don't always stay on your person while you're flipping through the air at high speeds. Also, for some reason, people seem totally fine with the idea of stealing other people's sunglasses. I find this odd. If I said to a complete stranger, hey, come here and press your face against my face, they would be grossed out by the thought, yet they'll steal and wear sunglasses that have been touching that same part of my face every day for the past year. Disgusting. Now apart from theft and loss, they can also get broken pretty easily at a theme park. Maybe they're in the bottom of your backpack as you toss it to the ground. Maybe they're at the top of your backpack but somebody else's backpack lands on top of yours. Or they get banged really hard into a shoulder harness. Because of these risks, I recommend you bring a cheap pair of sunglasses you don't really care about to the park. That way if they get broken or lost or stolen, your favorite pair is still safe at home. Number five, leave your hat at home. I know you're really excited to wear that new hat you just bought at Lids and show off the fact that it's so new you forgot to take the sticker off. What a stupid fucking trend. But trust me, you're better off leaving it at home. I've been hit in the face by more rogue trucker dad and baseball caps than I care to admit. Just the way they're designed seems to scream, do not take me on a roller coaster. You see this big bill part here in the front? That's going to catch a ton of wind and that wind is going to lift this thing off your head. Then guess what happens? Ernie, the right attendant who has to look for all the lost items at the end of the night, ends up with a brand new baseball cap with a sticker still on it. Sock caps or stockings or whatever people are calling them are okay, they usually stay on your head. Number four, bring a watch. Keeping track of time at the park is pretty important. Oftentimes, large groups will split up, agreeing to meet back at a specific location at a specific time. Or how about when the park's about to close and they tell everybody that if you're already in line, you can stay in line. You need to know when the park is going to close so you can get in line. And if you've been following my earlier tips and your phone is probably in your backpack or in your zipper pocket, making taking it out to check the time kind of a pain in the butt. And if you get stuck on a ride, it'll be way easier to keep track of just how many hours you've been stranded if you have a watch. Number three, leave your superhero cape at home. Six Flags has had a partnership with DC Comics for quite a while now, and one of the most popular items they sell are the superhero capes. It's not uncommon to see people walking around wearing Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman capes, and you might be tempted to bring back the cape you bought last time to the park. But unfortunately, you can't wear these while riding roller coasters. If you watched the women's version of this video, you'll remember the bit about hair getting caught in the mechanical parts and tearing people's scalps off. Well, superhero capes present the same sort of hazard, though not quite as devastating. You could, however, be choked to death by your Deathstroke cape, which would be pretty ironic. On a lighter note, superhero t-shirts are okay. Number two, bring the crap you absolutely need. I shouldn't have to tell anyone this, but if there are things you need, then you need to bring them. For instance, if you take medication to stay alive, bring your medication. If you wear contact lenses, you should bring contact lens solution. Though, on a side note, they do have some at the first aid office if you're desperate. Uh, this goes for anything else you might need as well. Things like chapstick, sunblock, talcum powder, deodorant. Please bring that last one if you tend to get stinky on hikes because that's what Six Flags is, a hike. You can bring aspirin, wet naps, hand sanitizer, aloe vera, just about anything else you need. If you have a baby, bring baby diapers. These are all common sense items but you wouldn't believe how many people pay through the nose to buy these same items at the park because they forgot to plan ahead. Number one, everything else. Yes, everything else. So this is basically a lazy hodgepodge of items that I have personally brought to the park at least once over the years, usually in preparation for one ride in particular, Roaring Rapids. I love this ride. What I don't love is the long-term effects of getting soaked from head to toe. Having a broken cell phone is not a good side effect of riding a water ride. For that reason, I recommend you bring a Ziploc bag for your electronic devices. Having chafed inner thighs two hours later because for some reason I still haven't dried is another negative side effect of having ridden Roaring Rapids, which is why I recommend buying Moisture Wick everything. Moisture wicking underwear is your first and last line of defense against chafing on a hot summer day. Add to it moisture wicking shorts, and yes, I did find a pair of the zipper pocket, and you have a dry butt in no time. Of course, if all that fails, you can always follow the greatest advice ever given in a science fiction story. Gotta know. 
where your towel is. Seriously, you have a backpack. Just throw a towel in there. Then when you get off the ride and you're soaked, just go to the bathroom, dry yourself off, and you're good to go. By the way, moisture wicking socks are also a thing. Bring an extra pair of socks and underwear and you'll be comfy as can be. All because you listened to tip number 10 and brought a backpack. So that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it. What's in your backpack when you go to Six Flags Magic Mountain? And have you checked out the female-centric version of this list? If you haven't, be sure to click the link at the end of the video. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as I release new videos every week. And until next time, keep being awesome. Everybody, hope you enjoyed that. By the time you see this, I should already be in Texas visiting Six Flags Over Texas and Six Flags Fiesta Texas, both of which I'm going to document just like I did my Discovery Kingdom video last year, which if you would like to watch, you can click the top box over here. Here. And if you want to see the sister list to this video, be sure to click the bottom box over here. Unless, of course, you're viewing this on a device that doesn't support this little box thing, in which case, you're out of luck.